The Mitchelson-Morley experiment was designed to measure the expected speed of the supposedly moving Earth through the ether. Einstein could not have a constant speed of light as he theorized if there was an ether. Einstein solved that issue by simply announcing that there was no ether. Einstein, by theorizing that there is a constant speed of light and there is no ether, solved the Mitchelson-Morley null movement result and saved the heliocentric model of an orbiting, rotating Earth. Light travels in waves, which is a fact that Einstein accepted. A wave needs a medium through which to travel. Imagine a wave in water without the water. It is an impossibility. The medium through which light travels is called ether. The simple law of physics that a wave needs a medium through which to travel is something that is easy to understand. The corollary of an ether for light to travel through, however, will seem foreign to the reader because it is not taught in schools. The educational system has been given over completely to the mystical theory of relativity where the ether is simply not allowed to exist. Einstein removed the ether from existence by edict. The problem is that a wave of light cannot exist without a medium for that light. Professor Herbert Dingle explains the absurdity of light waves without an ether through which to travel. Light consisted of vibrations in that ether that had physical properties, which also were, in principle, determinable. What Einstein was proposing, therefore, was to retain the finite velocity of light without the existence of any standard with respect to which that velocity had a meaning. Light consisted of waves with a definite length, frequency, and velocity in nothing. It was the grin without the Cheshire cat. The physical part of the theory was expendable. Only the equations needed to be saved. Einstein saw a way of saving the equations and did not consider it worthwhile to, quote, explain light. Einstein was satisfied to, quote, explain it in terms of things that we understood nothing of. In other words, not to explain it at all. If his assumptions were granted, he did save the equations. And when his theory ultimately made its general impact on the world, mathematics had so dominated physics that the non-existence of the Cheshire Cat was regarded as a triviality. The grin remained, and all was well. Einstein's construct of, quote, no ether, close quote, is an impossibility, just as a wave in water without the water is an impossibility. In any event, Einstein was proven wrong, and the ether was proven to exist in the 1913 Sagnac experiment. That experiment proved scientifically, beyond any doubt, that there is in fact an ether through which light travels. Indeed, airlines today use cockpit, ring, laser, gyroscopic compasses that are based upon the discovery by George Sagnac of fringe changes in light traveling through the ether. The changes in the fringes of light is then computed into a reading which tells the pilot about changes in bearing of the airplane. Without an ether, those sophisticated optical compasses would not work at all. The very existence of the laser gyroscopic compasses used by airplanes today proves that there is an ether and impeaches Einstein's claim that there is no ether. The existence of ether destroys the theory of relativity 
and establishes the Mitchelson-Morley experiment as proving that the Earth is stationary. Einstein removed the ether, which upended the traditional laws of physics. Einstein did not present any proof that there was no ether. He just made it up. Removing the ether removed the resistance of ether to light waves, which allowed Einstein to conjure the myth that light will not change speed on a moving surface.